But here in the slums, there is also an organization called Likhan. It runs women's health clinics. I've heard that uh, women's groups like Likhan that uh, go against the Catholic Church by providing cheap and artificial um, contraceptives to poor women in areas such as these get targeted by the Catholic Church and pro-life groups. Likhan's opponents say it secretly provides advice on abortion. Dr. Junis Melga runs this network of clinics. She told me that most women were desperate to avoid large families. Most of the pregnancies here are an accident. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. And in fact, uh, the survey says that uh, about half of all pregnancies are really unintended, and even unwanted. Initially, she sidestepped my questions about abortion. Instead, she took me to meet a woman who now obtained contraceptives from the clinic. Dr. Junis is walking me through the area where she works in. Um, 100,000 people live in 97 hectares of land in very squalid conditions. Until recently, groups like Dr. Melgaz received aid from the U.S. government. The influence of the Christian right in Washington means that funding is now ending. She's here. Dr. Melga's patient agreed to let us film. Kumusta? Hello. Is this the rest of your house? Yes. Remy told me that her husband was out looking for work. They were so poor that they had already given away two of their children to relatives. She and her remaining three children had not eaten that day. Remy has had two attempts at abortion where she tried to induce the abortion by massaging her own abdomen. That didn't work, so she gave birth each time to a son. The third time around, when she was four months pregnant, she took bitter herbs, threw herself out of a window. When that didn't work, she continued to massage her abdomen. And one day, she felt her water break and blood come flowing down. She blacked out because of the pain. <laughs> She bitterly wished she had had access to contraceptives earlier in life. In the eyes of the church, she's committed a crime, a mortal sin, by killing her own flesh and blood. But she says she couldn't afford to have this child. She already had two children who she couldn't afford to feed. To bring a third child into this world would have been a crime in itself because she wouldn't have been able to sustain this child. She felt the fact that she survived the abortion showed that God had forgiven her. Dr. Melga said that faced with stories like Remy's, she had no option but to give advice on abortions, despite what the law said. Eventually, we give them uh, information about the safe abortion. We, we also warn them against unsafe practices that would kill them. But you, but you know of service providers, safe service providers, who would look after these poor women and give them a proper abortion? Yes. Uh, I think most uh, women's NGOs would have uh, contact. I think if you really are pro-women, you would have contact to these uh, services that are underground. 40% of Filipinos live in desperate poverty. The larger the family, the more likely it is to be poor. This is the top of the dump. This is a garbage dump? Yes. Huh? 